alcohols are organic molecules that contain one or more hydroxyl groups attached to a carbon atom or atoms as shown in the illustration. By contrast, phenols contain one or more hydroxyl groups attached to a carbon in an aromatic ring. In phenols, the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group is sp2 hybridized. Alcohols and phenols can be classified based on how many hydroxyl groups are present. Monohydric alcohols and phenols have one hydroxyl group. Dihydric alcohols and phenols have two hydroxyl groups, while trihydric alcohols and phenols have three hydroxyl groups. Monohydric alcohols can be classified on the basis of the nature of the carbon atom attached to the hydroxyl group. These carbons are either sp3 or sp2 hybridized. We will first consider hydroxyl groups attached to sp3 hybridized carbons. In a primary alcohol, the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group is linked to one other carbon containing group or to none of the carbon containing group, as shown in the illustration. In a secondary alcohol, the carbon to which the hydroxyl group is linked is attached to two carbon containing groups. In a tertiary alcohol, the carbon linked to the hydroxyl group is bonded to three carbon containing groups. An allylic carbon is a carbon atom bonded to a carbon carbon double bond. Note that the allylic carbon is sp3 hybridized. An allylic alcohol has a hydroxyl group attached to an allylic carbon. Allylic alcohols can also be characterized as primary, secondary, or tertiary. As we saw before, a primary alcohol has one other carbon group attached to the allylic carbon. Secondary allylic alcohols have two carbon containing groups joined to the allylic carbon. Tertiary allylic alcohols have three carbon groups bonded to the allylic carbon. A benzylic carbon has an sp3 hybridized carbon bonded to an aromatic ring. Thus, we can describe a benzylic alcohol as having a hydroxyl group attached to a benzylic carbon. The molecules illustrated here are examples of benzylic alcohols. Benzylic alcohols can also be classified as primary, secondary or tertiary depending on the number of carbon groups bonded to the benzylic carbon as shown. Here is a problem for you to try. Classify these alcohols as primary, secondary or tertiary alcohols. Molecules A and B are both secondary alcohols. In both A and B, the carbon bonded to the hydroxyl group is attached to two other carbons. Molecules C and E are tertiary alcohols. The hydroxyl bonded carbon is bonded to three other carbons. Molecule D is a primary alcohol. Only one carbon containing group is attached to the hydroxyl bonded carbon. A vinyl carbon is a carbon atom double bonded to at least one other carbon atom. Vinyl carbons, which are also called alkenyl carbons, are sp2 hybridized. A vinylic alcohol contains a hydroxyl group attached to a vinyl carbon. Note that the vinyl carbon is sp2 hybridized. Can you classify these structures as allylic or vinylic alcohols? Structure A shows a vinylic alcohol. Notice how the hydroxyl group 
is linked to a carbon participating in a carbon-carbon double bond. Structure B shows an allylic alcohol. The hydroxyl group is bonded to a carbon that is adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond. Now that we understand the classification of alcohols, let's turn to their nomenclature. The common names of alcohols are derived from the name of the alkyl group with a Y, L ending, plus the word alcohol. For example, the alcohol with the formula CH3OH shown on the left is commonly called methyl alcohol. It contains only one carbon which corresponds to a methyl group. The molecule on the right has a four carbon chain in a straight line. This corresponds to N butyl alcohol, where the N indicates an unbranched carbon chain. In IUPAC nomenclature, the alcohol name is derived from the alkane name of the longest continuous carbon chain. Drop the E from the alkane name and replace with the suffix OL to determine the alcohol name. The location of the hydroxyl group and additional substituents are indicated by using the numbers of the carbon atoms to which these are attached. Let's look at the same molecules we used a little while ago to learn about common names. In the IUPAC system, methyl alcohol with the formula CH3OH is called methanol. N-butyl alcohol is called butan-1-ol. Give the IUPAC names of these structures. Try to find the names on your own before checking the answers. When naming organic compounds, remember to find the longest continuous carbon chain. Start counting the carbons at the end of the chain nearest to the hydroxyl group. In molecule A, the longest continuous chain has five carbons. Start counting from the right-hand side of the molecule at the end nearest to the hydroxyl group. Notice that the hydroxyl group is on carbon 2. There is a methyl group at carbon 3. So, the correct name of this molecule is 3-methyl-2-pentanol. In molecule B, the longest continuous chain has 8 carbons. If we start counting carbons at the left end of the chain, closest to the hydroxyl group, we see that the hydroxyl group is on carbon 3 and there is an ethyl group on carbon 4. So the correct name of the molecule B is 4-ethyl-3-octanol. Some alcohols have multiple hydroxyl groups. To name diols and triols, start with the alkane name of the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the hydroxyl groups. The E of the alkane name is retained and the ending OL is added. The appropriate multiplicative prefixes di, tri, etc. are used to indicate the number of hydroxyl groups present. Numbers in the name then give the locations of the hydroxyl groups. For the example shown here, the longest continuous chain has five carbons. We have to start numbering carbons at the right, closest to the hydroxyl groups. Notice that the hydroxyl groups are attached to carbons 2 and 3. So, this molecule is named 2,3-pentane-diol. Alternatively, you may see it written as pentane-2,3-diol. Can you write the IUPAC names of these alcohols? 
try to do this on your own before proceeding. Remember to work backwards from the longest continuous carbon chain that contains more than one hydroxyl group. Molecule A has a full carbon chain and two hydroxyl groups attached to carbon 2. Hence, its IUPAC name is butane 2,2-diol. Molecule B has a three carbon chain with one hydroxyl group on each carbon. Its IUPAC name is 1,2,3-propane-triol and the common name is glycerol. Molecule C has a carbon backbone containing six carbon atoms. Counting from the right, there are hydroxyl groups at carbons 2 and 4 and a methyl group at carbon 5. It is 5-methyl-2,4-hexane-diol. Cyclic alcohols are named in a similar manner. Count the number of carbon atoms in the ring. Use the prefix cyclo and the alkane name for the number of carbons in the ring. Drop the E from the alkane name and replace it with the suffix OL. The location of the hydroxyl group on the ring is considered to be carbon 1. Look at the molecule illustrated here. The ring has five carbon atoms, so this is cyclopentanol. Practice is essential to mastering organic nomenclature. Can you name these alcohols? Remember that the location of the hydroxyl group is considered to be carbon 1. So start counting there. If there is a choice of numbers, count to get the lower numbers for substituents. So, molecule A contains a six-member carbon ring with a hydroxyl group and a methyl group. Molecule A is a two-methyl cyclohexanol, not six-methyl cyclohexanol. Molecule B contains a three-member ring with a hydroxyl group and a chlorine substituent. Its correct name is 2 chlorocyclopropanol Molecule C has a four-member ring with a hydroxyl group and a bromine atom both attached to the same carbon. Molecule C is a 1-bromocyclobutanol. Let's turn our attention to the class of organic molecules called phenols. Phen is an old name for benzene. So, the benzene containing one hydroxyl group is known as phenol. Although the systematic name is benzanol, phenol is an accepted IUPAC name. We can use this as the basis for naming phenol derivatives. Toluene is an important benzene derivative. It has one methyl group attached to the aromatic ring. Crisol is the name for toluene molecules that have one hydroxyl group in addition to the methyl group. There are actually three isomers for crisol. The isomers for crisol can be named as phenol derivatives, 2-methylphenol, 3-methylphenol and 4-methylphenol. We can also introduce the use of the prefixes ortho, meta, and para to name benzene derivatives. Ortho refers to one, two di-substituted benzenes. Similarly, 2-methylphenol, shown on the left, can also be named as orthocrisol. Meta is used to refer to one, three di-substituted benzenes. So, 3-methylphenol, shown in the center, is also called metacresol. Finally, the prefix para is used for 1,4 disubstituted benzenes. Therefore, 1,4 methylphenol shown on the right 
is also called paracrisol. In IUPAC nomenclature, dihydroxybenzene derivatives are named as diols. Numbers give the locations of the hydroxyl groups. Shown here are three examples from left to right. They are benzene 1, 2 diol, benzene 1, 3 diol, and benzene 1, 4 diol. However, the dihydroxybenzene derivatives are actually better known by their common names. Benzene 1, 2 diol is known as cathicol or pyrocathicol. Benzene 1, 3 diol is commonly referred to as Resorcinol, hydroquinone or just quinol is the common name for benzene 1,4-diol. Let's do some more practice problems. Give the IUPAC names of the compounds shown here. Remember, the location of the hydroxyl group is carbon number 1. So, Molecule A can be named 2,6-dimethylphenol. Its common name is 2,6-xylenol. Molecule B is 4-chlorophenol or parachlorophenol. Molecule C is 1,2,3-benzene-triol. It is commonly known as pyrogallo. Ethers are a class of organic molecules that contain a bridging oxygen between two carbon-containing groups. The carbon groups may be either aliphatic or aromatic. Ethers can also be thought of as a substituted alkane with an alkoxy or aryloxy group. Ethers can be classified in several ways. Simple or symmetrical ethers have two identical carbon groups on either side of the oxygen. Mixed or unsymmetrical ethers have different carbon groups on either side of the oxygen. The common names of ethers give the names of the alkyl or aryl groups in alphabetical order, followed by the word ether. For example, the common name of the ether shown here is ethyl methyl ether. If the ether is symmetrical, use the prefix di plus the name of the alkyl group name, add the word ether at the end. The ether shown here has the common name diethyl ether. IUPAC rules for ether nomenclature are based on descriptions of ethers as alkoxy-substituted alkanes. The larger group is considered to be the parent hydrocarbon. A number gives the location of the alkoxy substituent. This makes the IUPAC system more versatile than the common names for ethers. Consider the molecule shown here. It has a methyl group and an ethyl group. The ethyl group contains more carbons. Therefore, the ethyl group is considered to be the parent chain with a methoxy substituent. In the IUPAC system, this ether is named methoxyethane. Here are some problems for you to try. Give the IUPAC names of the compounds shown here. They are all ethers. Remember that the longer chain is considered to be the parent chain. Molecule A is ethoxybenzene. Its common name would be ethyl phenyl ether. Molecule B has a 5-carbon chain with an ether linkage attached to a methyl group at carbon 3. 
Thus, molecule B is named 3 methoxy pentane. Molecule C contains a methyl group and a propyl group. Since the longer chain has three carbons, molecule C is named methoxypropane. Its common name would be methylpropyl ether. Molecule D has a six carbon substituted alicyclic chain with an ether linkage attached to the ethyl group at carbon 2 as shown. Therefore, its IUPAC name is 2-ethoxy-1-1-dimethylcyclohexane. Molecule E has a 3-carbon chain with an ether linkage attached to an ethyl group at carbon 2. Its IUPAC name is 2-ethoxypropane. We have figured out the names for many molecules in this module. Now, let's practice going in the other direction. Draw the correct structures for these molecules. Try to work these out on your own before checking the answers. When drawing molecules from names, the parent chain is given last in the name. Remember to work backwards. Molecule 1 is 2,3-diethylphenol. Start by drawing a phenol ring. The location of the hydroxyl group is position 1 on the ring. Then, add ethyl groups at carbons 2 and 3. Molecule 2 is 2-ethoxybutane. Start with a butane chain which has 4 carbon atoms. At carbon 2, insert an ether linkage to an ethyl group. Molecule 3 is 2-methyl-2-butanol. Start with a 4-carbon chain from butane. Place a hydroxyl group on carbon 2 and then put a methyl group on the same carbon. Molecule 4 is 2-propen-1-ol. Start with a 3-carbon chain since it is a propane derivative. Put a hydroxyl group on carbon 1. The double bond starts with carbon 2. The hydroxyl group outranks the double bond in IUPAC nomenclature. The last molecule is 1,3-cyclohexane diol. Start with a 6-member ring. Put a hydroxyl group on one carbon. That position is carbon number 1. Put a second hydroxyl group on a carbon atom two positions away. Let's start by looking at the hydroxyl group in alcohols. The oxygen is sp3 hybridized. It forms a sigma bond with end-to-end -end overlap with an sp3 hybrid orbital of carbon. In methanol, the carbon-oxygen-hydrogen bond angle is 108.9 degree, slightly less than the tetrahedral bond angle of 109.5 degree due to the repulsion between the lone pairs on the oxygen atom. The carbon-oxygen bond length is 142 picometers and the oxygen-hydrogen bond length is 96 picometers. Phenol, which is a planar molecule, also has a hydroxyl group, but the oxygen forms a sigma bond with an sp2 hybridized carbon. The carbon-oxygen-hydrogen bond angle is 109 degrees. Notice that the carbon-oxygen bond length in phenol, which is 136 picometers, is slightly shorter than in methanol. The carbon-oxygen bond length it's shorter in phenol because the bond has partial double bond character. The lone pairs on oxygen have conjugation with the aromatic ring. Methoxymethane is a typical ether with a bridging oxygen group. The four electron pairs around the oxygen, two bond pairs and two lone pairs 
have an approximately tetrahedral.